Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 11th of November 2019 and the time has just gone, just gone 11.40 GMT. And uh, it's been a fairly negative start uh, to the European trade session. Uh, we've seen equities here in the UK and over in mainland Europe uh, all push, uh, push lower on the day. Uh, there's a number of things going on. Um, the big story is, is uh, there's been renewed concerns uh, about the, um, the kind of unrest that we've seen uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, equity markets in Asia lost a lot of ground overnight. Um, we've seen a particular, unfortunately, a particular uptick increase. Uh, a particular increase uptick in the, uh, in the kind of unrest and violence witnessed on the streets of Hong Kong. That's obviously um, weighing on market sentiment in that part of the world, as is um, a slightly kind of cooling in relation to US-China trade relations. At the back end of last week, things were looking quite positive. There was talk that um, when, if, uh, if and when China and the US signed the phase one of, of the trade agreement next month, there was, there was talk that both sides were looking to reverse the tariffs that were imposed um, in September. Now, uh, in, well, at back in the back in the Friday and also early today, uh, we uh, the weekend we've heard that that may not necessarily be the case. President Trump said, you know, he didn't he didn't agree to a full rollback, but he kind of left the door open to a partial rollback. Um, also, over the weekend, President Trump reiterated the, the old view. That, uh, that China wanted to want deal uh, much more badly than he does, and he's he's willing to do a deal, uh, but only if it's, if it's the right deal for the US. So it's a, it's the kind of alliance he's uh, he's rolled off before, uh, and it just nonetheless gives the impression that he's not um, exceptionally eager to strike a deal as soon as possible. Um, there's always been a lot of to and froing with this with this, this uh, situation, so given the fact that we saw record highs in the US indices last week and equity sentiment around the world was very bullish last week. It's not a major surprise. We've now seen a slight kind of cooling in the relationship between the US and China and then in turn that's added to the kind of push to the downside in stocks. Uh, also this morning uh, from on, from the terms of UK economic reports, um, the UK Preliminary uh, third quarter GDP numbers came in at 0.3%, um, which is an improvement on the on the decline of 0.2% posted in the second quarter. But keep in mind, uh, economists were expecting an increase of 0.4%. So, slightly cooler than expected, but at least the UK avoided a technical recession, which is most which is the most uh, important thing. Um, so there are the kind of big headlines of actually what we've been seeing uh, this uh, this trading day on Monday. I'll take a quick look now at the weekend article uh, and then we'll move on to some uh, individual markets. So the weekend article can be found on our website. If you go to uh, cmcmarkets.com and under insights, you'll, under news analysis, you'll find the article. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have UK employment and average earnings. We have first quarter figures from JD Witherspoon. Uh, on Wednesday, we which I apologize, which is on third, which is on Wednesday. Also Wednesday, we have first quarter figures from Cisco Systems. On Thursday, we have a number of uh, reports out of China, uh, industrial production and uh, retail sales. On Thursday, we have third quarter figures from Germany, G um, GDP. Uh, that's going to be closely watched. Seeing as Germany is going to, there's talk that Germany is teetering on recession, uh, so that's going to be closely watched. On Thursday, we have first half figures from Burberry here in the UK. And on Thursday, we have third quarter figures from NVIDIA, which are, we were listed over in the US. So as I mentioned, um, we, you see the sell-off in, in, uh, in global equity markets. And the FTSE is being particularly, uh, particularly hurt this morning. Um, a combination of heavy, expo heavy weightings on, let's say, HSBC and Prudential, a big, uh, big exposure on the FTSE 100. They're weighing on the market, as is um, the UK market, FTSE 100 has a Pretty sizable, sizable representation of oil and gas and mining companies, which are under pressure today. So we can see here that for over a month, FTSE 200 has been pressing higher. In fact, uh, only last week we had a level last seen since uh, since early October. But up the last couple of days, particularly today, we've had a fairly move, fairly sizable move to the downside. So we're pretty much hovering in around the 30 moving average. This red line here, this blue line here, is the 50 moving average. So we had a pretty sizable move to the downside, but if we could hold above this blue line here, 
the 50 moving average, uh, which comes into play at 72, 79, and we're just south at the moment. But if you can get back above and like, hold above it, it's likely we could see the kind of month long upward move continue. And if that is the case, if we do try to press a higher from here, we could be looking at retesting uh, the early November highs. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards this zone here. Um, the highs of, early, of late September in around 7,440, there thereabouts, up to this line here, uh, this area of uh, previous support in around 7,470. So if the wider trend does continue, keep an eye for 7,400 and then up to kind of 7,440, 470 zone up around here. If on the other hand, yeah, if the market does continue to kind of press on uh, lower from here, However, I have a size of break below the 50 moving average that potentially could become new resistance because it actually as previously as support. And if you press on lower from here, we could be looking heavy back down toward the 7,200 zone. That area we saw a fair bit of consolidation in that area uh, in uh, October, so the possibility that, that area could act as support to any further downsides. Uh, take a look now at what's going on over in Germany in the DAX. So, the back in the last week, the DAX was in quite good shape. At the back end of the last week, the DAX hit a level last seen, last seen since January 2018. So I'll give you an indication of how strong the DAX, uh, the DAX was uh, in fact last week. So the market's been in very much of a trend. All things considered, given how much ground the market has moved to the upside since early October, in the last say, five, or five or six weeks, the market hasn't really moved a whole lot lower in the last couple of sessions. So the upper trend is still very much intact. Uh, so if we, if we do manage to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at uh, pressing on target, targeting around say um, um, thirteen thousand six hundred would be the kind of you know the kind of medium term view. Should we kind of continue to press on higher from here? But given that you know we've had a bit of uncertainty what's going on uh, over over in the Far East and also what's going on between the US and China. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a bit of a drift lower in the near term to the downside, a continuation of the kind of recent sell off. And should that be the case, uh, we could kind of head um, back down toward the psychology potent 13,000 mark or this area here in around 12,980. So, kind of the zone of say 13,000, 12,980 could potentially act as support should we lose further ground from here. And even if we do have a fairly decent break below that, we could be looking ahead toward this area here in around 12,800. And if we go below that, we could be heading head back down towards this zone here, uh, down around 12,660. And to be honest, <coughs> given how much the market has moved to the upside since mid August, uh, the last few months, it's only really if you go below this line here, this blue line here, the 50 moving average uh, at 12,520. It's only really go below that. Could then we get to kind of become a bit scared and think, actually, you know what, maybe the, the bullish trend of the last few months has then come to an end. That's what's going on in Europe. Things are in better shape in the US. As I mentioned, you know, it's very strong with record highs over in the US last week. So we can see that we've seen a bit of a Bit of a loss, a bit of ground on Friday, lots of bit, of bit of ground on the Dow futures today. But we're still looking in the kind of very much upward trend. I respect the Dow Jones open in around 27,560 out of the moment. If you can continue to press on higher from here, and should the wider upward trend continue, we could be looking at retesting last week's highs in around 27,000. Uh, 27,775 there, thereabouts. And if you go beyond that, you know, traders are looking towards 27,800, 900, and the psychologically important 28,000 itself. Uh, if you do manage to drift a bit lower from here, uh, which is quite possible given that um, sentiment appears to be a bit sour, uh, we haven't had a decent, uh, you know, move kind of re retracement in a while. Support can be found from this zone here in around 27,400. Or potentially down toward this area here, 27,200. So these are areas potentially we could see some uh, uh, buyers enter the fold. Uh, and if you do have a fairly decent pullback, uh, support can be found from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, uh, which also kind of coincides with the late October low. Uh, and and that, that comes to play at, at around 26,924. Take a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar situation, to be honest, whereby only the back end of last week we had fresh record highs. We come back ever so slightly off those levels. Uh, we're currently expecting the S&P 500 to open at 3,081. So if the wide upper trend continues, we could be looking at targeting 3,090, and then beyond that, 
3,100. Uh, any moves to the downside could find some support from this area here in around 2,000. Sorry, 3,066 there thereabouts. And even if you go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this zone, 3,040 to 3,025. So that kind of 15 point zone might as act as support should you move lower. And even if you get, uh, even if you go below that, the kind of psychologically important 3,000 area, an area which we saw a bit of um. But about resistance and support and consolidation all, all in around the kind of late October period. So keep an eye for those areas. Um, should we see a fairly move to the downside? But you know, the overall upper trend is still very much intact. I'll take a look now at some of the major currencies, starting off with the euro versus the, the US dollar. So the wider view has been very much to the downside in the euro dollar. Uh, but keep in mind, we, we did have a fairly decent rally or a correction between early October and uh, kind of late October. But it would appear that the market, you know, the highs of early November really failed to take out the highs of mid-October. Now the market began to kind of turn lower on itself or back below the 50-day moving average. So this could be a beginning um, because this could be the sign that the market's moving lower. There's a steady increase in negative momentum on the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator. This could be the sign, you know what, we've had the, 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 you know, the, 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 the medium-term pullback. But it could be a sign that the kind of wider negative trend on the euro dollar is coming back into force. So we could be looking heading back down towards the one spot 10 area. And should we have a decent uh, size and move below that, we could then be looking at retesting uh, the early October lows in a, just in south of uh, one spot 09. Uh, we'd really want to be kind of taken out um, this area here, um, just north, basically, basically a combination, which is a mixture of the kind of early November highs. With also the highs of, of uh, mid October in around the kind of one spot 1170, one spot 1175 area in around here. We'd really need to be kind of taking those levels out before we, we could then think, you know what, the, the kind of the upper trend from early October is actually in play. Uh, and if you go beyond, beyond that, we could be looking heading towards 112 and move beyond, beyond 112, could put the early August high in at one spot 1249 back into play. I take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. So between from early September onwards, you've had a remarkable move to the upside in the uh, in the British pound versus the US dollar. Uh, only at the end of October, we hit a level uh, last year in May, so we had five month high in May. We managed to kind of drift a bit lower, but by and large, you know, we held on to most of the ground that was gained in the last few months. We're comfortably above this red line here. The true they moving average, so the, so the outlook for um, pound dollar is still quite positive. So if you could if you could continue this upward trend that we're in, we could be like retesting this area here in just north of 130, one spot 30, 12. And if we go beyond that, we could be like testing this area here, the early May high, in at one spot 31.78. If we do manage to drift to the downside, support could be found from this red line here in at one. Um, in at one spot 27, uh, one spot 27, um, 0, 0, 5. and if you go beyond below that, uh, this is zone here in around one spot 26 might act as a support. We saw a bit of consolidation and the market took a bit of a breather there in the middle of October, so it might act as support in the uh, in the near term. Uh, moving on now to currencies. So last week on back in the last week, gold dropped to a three month low. Uh, they a bit of move up to the upside in the US dollar. Also, you know, given how strong stocks were, traders were very much in risk on sentiment. So it's a gold suffered a small bit. So we can see here on Friday, gold uh, took out the lows on Friday, took, managed to take out the lows of early October. So I fell back to a level last seen in August. So we've been broadly speaking kind of moving to the downside of the gold market. Um, we're now actually back below the 100 day moving average. Which comes into play at 14.77. So while we, while we hold below that, we could be looking at uh, seeing. Uh, we could look at giving up further ground, and we could take us back toward, toward this zone here in around to the 14.30, 14.40 down around this area here. Uh, and it's only really if you can get back above 1500 at, at the very least, could actually be, could then be the, begin to think, you know what, maybe we're actually going to continue on in the kind of wider upward trend that's been in play um, for for many many months, but. It would appear that uh, we're kind of been eking lower on the gold market, so keep an eye out for 1430, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. I take a look now what's going on on the oil on the oils market, starting off with Brent. So if we um, 
if you draw a low between the lows of early October and along here, we get this trend line along here. As you can see, we've respected, respected that trend line a number of occasions. So while we hold above it, it's likely that the near term upward trend is going to continue. And if that is, is to be the case, we could be looking at retesting this red line here, which is the 200 movie average. And that comes to play in at 64 spot 83. And a move beyond, the, beyond that, could take us towards this zone here in at 65 spots 79. So if we do manage to kind of drift a bit lower, retest the trend line could take us back to in around just north of $61 a barrel, in around kind of 61 spot 10. And even if you drop below that, uh, support could be found from potentially from the psychologically important area of 60 bucks per barrel. So that is Brent. I'll uh, finally take a look at WTI. It's a very similar chart to, to be perfectly honest. Price action, but it's actually more bullish on WTI because WTI is actually further away from its respective trend line. So if we draw a low between the, you know, the, the lows of early October and, and, uh, and mid October, we get this trend line here. Notice how the market has been kind of you know edging higher, higher highs and higher lows along the way, and we're comfortably above the uh, this uh, this trend line here. So if we can press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this zone here at around fifty-eight dollars a barrel. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the psychology forward and 60 bucks per barrel. Yeah, so it's only really if you have a decent move to the downside. Support can be found from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 55 spot 56. And even if you go below that, we can be looking at heading back down towards the trend line, which you come into play south of 54, somewhere in a region around 53 spot 75, there thereabouts. Uh, well, that's all for me this week. Thank you for listening, and please tune in next week. Thank you very much.